Good evening, welcome to ITV News Meridian. Tonight's headlines in the South. Southampton Football Club's assistant coach Eric Black is named in a press report into alleged bribery. We have the latest. 100 days of Brexit, Britain's decision to leave the EU. So what does the South think now of the result? We'll find out. Recognising the importance of black history, a month of special celebration gets underway in the South. And a race to the finish. We have a preview of the British Touring Car Championship being held this weekend. But who will be cruising to victory? Good evening to you. Southampton Football Club says it will work closely with the Premier League and the FA following allegations that assistant manager Eric Black discussed how bribes could be made. It's claimed he gave advice to undercover reporters posing as agents and working for the Daily Telegraph. 52-year-old Mr Black was with the Saints squad for the Europa League match in Israel last night. He's been unavailable for comment today, but a spokesperson for him says any suggestion he was complicit in such discussions is false. Richard Slee reports. Filmed in the bar of an exclusive hotel in the New Forest, this is the moment the Daily Telegraph claims that Eric Black broke FA rules. It's alleged that the Southampton assistant manager offered the name of a colleague at a lower league club who might take money, or what's known as a bung, for inside information about talented players who could be signed up to a management company in the Far East. At that level, he's earning um, you know, an awful lot of money. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not, you don't even need to pay them. You just say, look, we've set up the company, we want to go big, you, you build up the whole thing, mm. and you're going to go me, and then... You know, if you get somebody, we'll give you a couple of grand or something. Or... He also seemed to imply that it would be easy to get staff at other lower league clubs to agree to introduce players to the fictitious management company. Eric Black joined Southampton as assistant to manager Claude Puel in the summer, and his spokesperson says he doesn't recall the possibility of bribing officials being mentioned in the meeting with the undercover reporters. This morning, Southampton fans who'd seen the video didn't think Eric Black had done anything wrong. I don't think he was looking for any money himself. I think he was just speaking in general what he's seen in football through his career. There's going to be a lot of um, a lot of names thrown into the into the basket, and I, I think I think he's he's innocent. In a statement today, the club says it's fully committed to investigating the claims made in the Daily Telegraph and it intends to work closely with the Premier League and the FA with regard to this matter. Southampton prides itself in being a family club and will not want to be associated with some of the more dubious financial practices that have been revealed in recent days. Richard Slee, ITV News, Southampton. And Andrew Page will have more on that and the rest of the sports news a little later in the programme. In other news, 18 people were injured when two buses collided in Weymouth this morning. It happened on the Esplanade. 12 people were taken to hospital and others were given first aid at the scene. It's believed none of the injuries was serious. An unexploded World War II bomb that was discovered in Portsmouth Harbour thankfully turned out to be more of a damp squib. Gun Wharf Keys was evacuated last night and the bomb was moved to waters off-ride. It was blown up with barely a ripple. Well, tomorrow marks 100 days since Britain voted to leave the European Union. There is no doubt June the 23rd's decision was one of the biggest political shake-ups in history, and a lot has happened since. Yes, we've seen the downfall of one Prime Minister, the battle to replace him, and the rise of Theresa May, along with more political resignations, protests and in-party fighting. An extraordinary three months. Here in the South, almost 53% of people, more than 1.3 million, voted to leave, seen here in red. Gosport had the strongest leave vote, with 64% of people wanting out of the EU. Only seven areas in the South voted to remain, including Hart, Brighton and Hove and Winchester. 
So what happens next? We were told by Theresa May that Brexit means Brexit. But what could that look like once we actually leave the EU? More on that in a moment. But first, how does the South feel about the EU result 100 days on? Here's Juliet Fletcher. Let June the 23rd go down in our history as our Independence Day. Now, almost 100 days on, the path of Britain's future has altered, together with a change in leadership. The British people have made a very clear decision to take a different path. And as such, I think the country requires fresh leadership to take it in this direction. A recent survey has shown that 7% of the people who voted to leave now regret their decision. We set up a Brexit barometer to see how feelings are three months on. At universities in the region, the concern is that highly qualified staff and international students should be allowed to travel freely to the UK to work. Our staff are concerned, and not just our European staff actually, our home staff are concerned for their European colleagues, our recruitment staff are concerned, our European students are concerned, our researchers are concerned. There is a lot of worry out there. Gosport saw the largest vote to leave. We asked people how they feel now. The fears of the Remain campaign, the economy's going to blow up and this, that and everything else, Godzilla's going to come and strike us down, it hasn't happened. My feeling is the business has gone a little bit stabilised, you know. It's not, although it's in the paper that it's booming, it's not actually booming. You know, it is stabilised, basically. The value of the pound plunged following the referendum, but hotel owners in the south have reported a good summer. Certainly we didn't see any real change in our business. July was not a fantastic month, largely because of the weather. Certainly August has been an extremely good month. So the world's got back together. It's not come off with the axis. We're all doing business. We're continuing to think about investment. On the south coast, fishermen were delighted with the referendum result. They hope Brexit will mean an increase in their fishing quotas. We have uh, foreign access to British waters at the moment through other trade agreements and trade deals. What we need to make sure that uh, foreign vessels are excluded from British waters and British fishermen can catch fish in their own waters again. Whether you're positive about the future or fear for the unknown, what is clear is that the job of leaving the EU will take some time. Juliet Fletcher, ITV News. Well, the political heavyweights say exit negotiations are likely to begin in the new year. But as rival camps square up with different versions of hard and soft Brexit, what's at stake? Let's find out. Here's Rachel. Well, a so-called soft Brexit means we leave the EU in name but continue to observe many of its rules. We'd get access to the single market to allow trade pretty much along the lines we have now. But we'd have to accept migration limits that the EU would decide. This is what some people call the Norway option. It's the deal that they have with the EU. At the other extreme, hard Brexit could involve the UK leaving the EU single market and trading with it as if it were any other country outside Europe. This would mean tariffs and other trade restrictions between the EU and the UK, but it would allow us to set our own migration rules. It does go without saying, of course, that there are lots of compromises between hard and soft, and many favour a middle way. Well, the MP John Redwood, of course, being one of the most outspoken anti-EU voices for many years. Mr Redwood, thanks for joining us. You seem to advocate we have the best of all possible worlds, access to the single market with no tariffs and our own migration controls. But it's not likely, is it? I think it's very likely because, of course, the rest of the EU sells us a lot more than we sell them. And the things they sell us could have heavier tariffs whereas most of the things we sell them will be tariff-free anyway because we sell a lot of services and they are tariff-free under any normal basis of trading worldwide. So I think the, the French, the Germans and the other leading governments will be under a lot of pressure from their industry and commerce not to impose tariffs on their own trade with us. It would be rather silly of them to do so and I, I don't think they're that foolish. Assuming then we get out on the terms you're hoping for, how much money could we save? Well, we're, we're bound to save the money we contribute. I don't think anyone's suggesting that we carry on making financial contributions to an organisation we've left. And we, we set this up very clearly in the referendum campaign. The net figure, the money we send them and don't get back in any form at all, 
Uh, it was about 10 billion then, it's about 11 billion a year now, and we could spend it on whatever the government's priorities are. Um, the Vote Leave campaign suggested health spending and getting rid of some VAT charges on uh, tampons uh, and on uh, domestic fuel. Uh, that would be a very good option, but it would be up to the government to decide how to spend all that money. Do you accept the price we have paid for this vote in terms of division and a rise in racism has been a terrible price to pay? Well, I don't like any rise in racism, and we had racism before the vote, and we have had some racist incidents after the vote, and I and all my colleagues condemn it. I do not believe that the Brexit vote is the cause of racism. Racism is an evil which was there well before the vote. Fairly briefly, when should we trigger Article 50, giving formal notice we are ready to quit the EU? Well, well I would do it today, but I think the government wants a little bit longer to think it all through. I think they're talking about uh, doing it early in the new year. Sooner the better, because the sooner we're out, the sooner we can spend our own money on our priorities, the sooner we can have free trade agreements with the rest of the world that the EU won't let us do all the time we're a member, the sooner we can make our own laws and answer to our own electors. John Redwood, good to talk to you. Thank you. Well, you're watching ITV News here in the Meridian region. Thanks for choosing us. Coming up, the weekend weather forecast with Simon. He's predicting something of a mixed bag, but he does have some really exciting, dramatic news. Plus... A dark and gritty tale. We'll be previewing ITV's latest drama series. It's filmed and set in Brighton, and it's on our screens later tonight. More on all of our stories, do head to itv.com forward slash Meridian. Any views or news, call us, please. 0808 10 10 095, the number to ring. Or get in touch via Facebook, or if you prefer, why not send us a tweet at ITV Meridian. Now, Black History Month has been launched in some style in Southampton today. Throughout October, the contributions of black people will be marked through a series of events in the city, including art exhibitions, lectures and concerts. Well, the theme this year is role models. We're delighted to say the police commander of Southampton, one of the highest ranking black female officers in the country, is with us now. Superintendent Alison Hidari, thank you so much for coming in and being with us. You were at the Black History Month launch today. Why are you supporting it? Personally. For me, it's really important to understand communities in Southampton, but also to recognise the strength of Southampton, which is in its diversity. Well, you are a role model yourself, of course, and you've always been on the beat in Hampshire. I guess this is where you learned your trade. It is. I joined up in Hampshire 16 years ago, and I was deployed to Southampton. And I found from that time that it was really interesting to see how communities work in Southampton. And all these years later, I'm back again as a superintendent, and that actually is really exciting for me. We spent a lot of time on the programme this evening talking about the effects of Brexit 100 days on. What is your personal message to those who may have felt some of the anti-immigration feeling that we've all heard about? Well, my message to communities is that the police treat hate crime very, very seriously. And we are trying to encourage people to report in to us. And my message is, is that if you report hate crime to us, we will investigate and we will support communities in fighting hate crime. There are plenty of challenges, of course, about policing a city like Southampton, but what are your hopes for building relationships with the communities here? Right, my hope is that um, our relationship with communities will go from strength to strength. And in doing that, I think I would like to encourage um, as many people as possible from different communities to think about joining us. It's not just about being a police officer. We've also got um, community support officers. We've got jobs and control room. There's a whole breadth of um, areas of jobs that people could join us. Good luck with Black History Month. Good luck with your job. Thank you very much. Well, I spent a very happy morning today at the Hampshire Police Disability Roadshow. It is an annual event at the police headquarters at Hamble that's full of fun, but with a serious message. It encourages disabled people to be aware of hate crime in their community. Sadly, that is increasing here in the South. The point really is so we can uh, hold an event that allows us to engage with people with disabilities uh, and understand from them uh, what their concerns or their worries are um, and it allows us to put things in place to hopefully address them but also just break down barriers um, so we can build up better and stronger relationships. Well, now it's time for a look at all the sports news. Here is Andrew Pate. Thank you very much indeed. Now, it's the furthest Southampton have ever travelled for a competitive match. 
They played Hapoel Be'er Sheva in Israel last night in the Europa Cup and ended up with what could turn out to be a valuable point. Selco Builders Warehouse, proud sponsors of ITV Meridian Sports Report. The Happel fans love their new stadium. They moved in a year ago and are yet to lose a match here. Southampton, though, had won their last four games and really should have taken the lead after three minutes. Captain Virgil van Dijk missing the target. Around 300 Saints fans made the trip to Israel. Next month, 8,000 are expected to travel to Inter Milan. And they'll be hoping to see another clean sheet from the team. This was Southampton's fifth in a row. And in the end, the team were happy to pick up a point. We played well. And I think a, a point over here, I think it's, it's a good result. Um, I should have scored and we won the game then. But <laughs> I thought the goalie was coming as well. But I should have done much better than that. But still, I'm... I'm OK with, with the feeling that we, we kept a clean sheet again uh, after a long journey, tough journey as well. Um, and uh, now the focus needs to be on Leicester, obviously. Yeah, so Southampton travel from Israel to Leicester City, their Premier League match on Sunday. And the Saints say they'll work closely with the FA over allegations made against assistant manager Eric Black in The Telegraph today, allegations he denies. Eddie Howe takes his Bournemouth side to Watford tomorrow. He was asked about the newspaper's investigations, which led to Sam Allardyce quitting as England manager earlier this week. He says he can't comment in any of these cases, but claims he has never been offered a bum. Certainly not. No, I mean, the structure at this football club is I pick the players with the recruitment team um, and then someone else does the financial deals with the agents, deals with the contracts, etc. So... I'm removed from the financial dealings with the football club and I think it suits me that way. I want to be on the training pitch with the players, that's my only concern. Also this weekend in the Championship, Reading are hoping to bounce back after their 4-1 defeat at Brentford on Tuesday. They host Derby, who are struggling in 20th place. Brighton visit Sheffield Wednesday, where they haven't won in over 100 years. In League One, Oxford United and Swindon are on the road. Well, in League Two, Crawley and Portsmouth are happy to be at home, particularly Pompey, who've won their last four at Fratton Park. The British Touring Car Championship has broken all sorts of records this season, with 12 different winners over the 27 rounds. The finale is this weekend, with Hampshire's Rob Cullard, one of eight drivers who could potentially land the title. Derek Johnson has been to Brands Hatch today to check on final preparations. It's fast and furious. Sunday's the very close final round of the British Touring Car Championship. The current champion won it by a whisker last time. Again, he's in the running. You never know what's going to happen next. You know, it'll twist and turn as the day goes on with three races, reverse grids. You know, this is going to go to the absolute wire. I really think it'll go to the last few laps of the last race on Sunday afternoon. Among the racers, 22-year-old Jake Hill, hoping for a podium finish. You know, you've got eight drivers fighting for the championship this weekend, so, you know, one, one of the races they might want to be playing it safe and I might be able to nip through and, and may, maybe, get, maybe get a trophy. That'd be great. How much more goes on under the bonnet than the car somebody dr drives down the road? Uh, a hell of a lot, yeah. For starters, the, the suspension is all completely different. Obviously the engines are heavily reworked. There's a thousand man hours going to a shell before it even goes to the paint shop. On Saturday, it's the last round of the Clio Cup. Mike Bushell is in second place right now, aiming for the big prize. Having been the champion before, two years ago, um, it's a very different feeling. I was swapping notes with the former triple champion, Paul Rivet, and he said, you know, the pressure does feel off. I don't know if I'm the favourite or not, and Wharton Hills has got a, an eight-point advantage on me. However, I love this track. You know, it's great just getting out on track first thing in the morning. With touring cars as popular as ever, it looks like being a full house here at the weekend, with championships to be decided and cups to be won. Derek Johnson, ITV News, Brands Hatch.
And the racing is on ITV4 on Sunday. Are you looking forward to it? I certainly am, Frederick. It's just that that three-wheeler you drive is never, I thought, very, <laughs> it's not very sporty. I think I'd be brilliant in that. I, I just don't know why I haven't been invited. I'm so rude. <laughs> have, a, <laughs> have a good weekend. Thanks. Well, now, talking of Andrew, a dark and gritty tale begins on our screens tonight. Filmed and set in Brighton, it's a brand-new detective series called... The Level. Yes, the six-part drama follows the story of Detective Sergeant Nancy Devlin, who's living a double life. Our reporter Divya Coley was on set to meet the cast, including some very well-known ITV faces. It's the new crime drama with a difference, written by top female writers and producers and a female protagonist at the heart of its story. Carla Crome plays Detective Sergeant Nancy Devlin, a good cop with a dark secret. She's had um, a difficult past and difficult upbringing um, from quite a volatile household in terms of her parents' relationship and that's... Um, made her want to be a person who does right by good people and um, good people in her eyes aren't necessarily the people that play by the rules in terms of the law. Filmed and set in Sussex, the six-parter reveals a bleaker side of Brighton but captures its beauty too. Lindsay Coulson, best known as Carol in EastEnders, plays the boss, DCI Michelle Newman. I feel very powerful when I play somebody like that. I seem to be marching around corridors with Max on quite a lot. Um, a bit too scarily when I go home, I suddenly feel like, yeah. I think if I had a badge, I would worry about the power that I had with my badge. And his killer could come from any one of the world's Frank inhabited. Gunner, I want you and DS Devlin to lead a surveillance team. We need everything that you can bring back from that funeral. I think people will be surprised to see on on ITV in a good way um, and I think that you know it's something that is definitely worth tuning into and I feel like like I said it's it's not something I've seen before and a well-known face from the world of Downton Abbey is back this is how you describe this morning by exec producers this is how his characters described a proper charming entertaining gentleman you wish he were yours Wow that I've been playing him. Oh no. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, no, he is. He's um, very charming, uh, very gregarious. Um, you know, he's a he, he's, uh, on the surface, he seems a really nice guy. So, yeah, he's got that spark in his eye, and he's, you know, he can light up a room. Um, yeah. <laughs> Just complete opposite to me. <laughs> the level begins tonight at 9 pm. Divya Kohli. ITV News. Mm. Oh, that looks rather that good. Looks exciting. Very familiar yeah. faces there, and we have another one with us now. Hello, Simon. Yes, yeah, of course, if you're looking for drama, yes. you're looking for excitement, yes. you're looking for something that will blow your socks off, Go on. well, you can't do any worse than the weather. You can't. Surely. And Absolutely. this weekend, it's going to be one of those weekends. I'll tell you in the forecast in a moment. But there is a change in the weather coming. Is there? But it's not what you're thinking. Have a look at this. Right. It's the nation's favourite talking point, and we can't get enough of the weather. But do you remember when here on ITV it looked like this? So, in more detail, the weather? There will be a few showers about it. I'm sure you expected me to say that. I've said it so many times in the past years. Well, from Monday, it's all change. On Good Morning Britain, ITV National Weather, and here at ITV Meridian, the weather will have a whole new look and we'll be unveiling our brand new high-tech graphics that will tell the weather story as it happens. Can some blast from the past there. Yeah, some lovely faces. Hey, can you tell us any more? Would, Fred, what would you like to know? Ask me absolutely anything. What's it going to look like? I can't tell you. <laughs> Ask me another. <laughs> Go on. Is it going to make the weather forecasting more accurate? Well, let me just tell you. Yes. I will still be here, yes. even though the uh, weather will look slightly different. So make of that what you will. It sounds really... Are you excited about it? We're, we're very excited. And we've, we've been talking to people. We've been talking to to the people who matter, you are viewers, about what you want from the weather. Do you know, yes. we said it's the most talked about subject in the country. Yeah. Women talk about nothing more than weather. 
that's the, it's the biggest ever for women. women. Who knew? Women talk about the weather more than anything else. Yeah, apparently so. Who told you that? It says it on a piece of paper, <laughs> really. <laughs> and the weekend just a little bit unsettled? One day. Let's have a look. Here he is, Simon Parkin. From blizzards to pool, driving through Europe, Eurotunnel the Shuttle sponsors ITV Meridian Weather. Well, if you're yearning for a return to some holiday weather, Sunday is the day for you because that's definitely going to be the better of the two this weekend. Tomorrow, we have an area of low pressure scooting eastwards across the country and that's going to bring some heavy showers and some heavy rain too. Sunday, however, high pressure very much in charge and the skies will be blue. Uh, back to tonight and it's clear spells to get us going. A dry night, temperatures taking a bit of a dip after dark down into single figures, seven or eight in some rural spots but then towards the end of the night we see those showers start to push in showers or longer spells of rain some very heavy downpours uh, could be 10 to 20 millimeters of rain in some places so a lot of surface spray on the roads show a bit of respect for your other drivers because it will be tricky out there but an improving story uh, certainly some brighter spells towards the end of the day dry by the evening but cold by day 13 or 14 the high your high tide times you can see in Portsmouth 10 to 2 in the morning, 5 past 12 in the afternoon. Eurotunnel the Shuttle sponsors ITV Meridian Weather. Well, in just a moment, the ITV Evening News with Mark Austin and Charlene White. Rachel's got out of news. Do join her if you can. But for now, from the team here at ITV Meridian, thanks for watching. Enjoy your weekend and don't miss Monday and that exciting weather news. <laughs> I can't wait. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>